This video is brought to you in part by Squarespace. Welcome back to Sonic Speed Reading. Today, we're gonna to be following up on Amy's adventure to Angel Island, where she teamed up with the Guardian to put an ancient relic back in its resting place. But as it turns out, we weren't quite done with those little statues, as we see Knuckles team up with a crew that gives me and a lot of other older fans a great hit of nostalgia. And while all that's happening, we're gonna be checking in on Cream the Rabbit as she prepares dinner. I promise it's more interesting than it sounds. The issues we're gonna be looking at today are issues 65 and 66. The Knuckles story, known as Relic Robbing Rumble, is written by Ian Flynn with pencils by Mauro Fonseca, inks by Rick Mack, colors by Reggie Graham, and Dinner at Creams is written by Evan Stanley with art by Adam Bryce Thomas and colors by Valentina Pinto. Letters by Sean Lee with an editor credit for David Mariette and production credit for Joanna Natalie. Now this story follows up on a couple of little plot threads and mixes in with some other stories that are sure to pay off shortly before this canon goes on a brief hiatus, but for today we're just going to be focusing on these two stories, and things kick off real quick. As we're back on Angel Island in the Marble Zone, where Knuckles confronts the Babylon rogues as they attempt to steal the two relics. Jet and Wave make off with the statues as a sick storm after Knuckles. The Echidna gets in a good hit, but unfortunately, Storm grabs him by the leg and slams him into a wall, giving the birds enough time to make their escape. And unfortunately, even a ticked off Knuckles can't catch up to their extreme gears. And that leads us to the Chaotix Detective Agency, where we see the Echidna hiring the group to help him track down the Babylon rogues. And this, of course, is the major appeal of this particular story. A lot of us older fans were introduced to a lot of these characters in Knuckles' Chaotix, and we haven't really seen the Echidna team up with these guys too often since, at least outside of Archie Comics, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, the Echidna asks asks how the rogues even knew about the relics. And Vector responds, saying that they're professional thieves, and they specialize in ancient artifacts, and Angel Island, unfortunately, is a great target for that. Espio suggests that maybe they thought the relics would be less guarded than others, or maybe they're going for something specific for a buyer. As all that's happening, Charmy picks up the phone and says that he is going to call Amy. Since she's the one that helped bring back the relic, he's sure that Amy would also want to help bring it back. But in a panic, Knuckles slams the phone down, breaking it, saying they can't tell Amy. <laughs> Maintaining his pride is far too important. Espio calls him out on it, but Knuckles doesn't deny it. It's a cute little scene. And Vector is ready to just get a roll on with this investigation. As he says, they never turn down work that pays, and he wants to close this case in record time, as the comic focuses up on his schedule showing dinner at Vanilla's. <laughs> It's adorable. The comic then shifts his focus over to Egg Base Delta, where we see Knuckles and the Chaotix wrecking shop, trying to get the attention of Dr. Eggman. And quickly, they get exactly that, asking what they're even doing. They've already ruined his recent plans. He hasn't had a time to start up a new scheme. Knuckles furiously blames him for the stolen relics. But Eggman has no idea what he's talking about. And Knuckles responds that Vector figured out that Eggy hired the Babylon rogues to steal them back. And I enjoy this little tidbit here that shows you how Eggman Eggman perceives characters we don't normally see him interact with. His monitor flies over to Vector, saying, Out of all these buffoons, I thought you were supposed to be the smart one. Vector nervously pulls at his chains, saying, Look, we're on a tight deadline, and usually Eggy's at fault. And Eggman just says, with an exasperated sigh, that he takes whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He doesn't keep track of everything he grabs during his conquests. He has his robots catalog everything. Knuckles says that the relic was found in the Imperial City, and that he knows that Eggman took it. Eggman doesn't deny it, but he asks, why would he bother to hire the Babylon rogues when he could just send robots? He asks if the relic had any special value, any arcane or mystic powers, and Knuckles, looking a little embarrassed, says it had historic and sentimental value. And the annoyed Eggman just says he doesn't know or care about it, now just get out. I love how embarrassed all of them look with Knuckles saying, we made a mistake, at least I'm strong enough to admit it. It's a very cute scene, and kind of sets the tone for the rest of the story here. This is almost just a game to these characters. I love that Eggman can go off and attempt to take over the world, but the moment the heroes come in and wreck his stuff, unexpectedly, he takes offense to it. The dude is always up to nasty stuff. The world is better off without his robots, but the heroes just leave embarrassed. We then find them back in Seaside City, enjoying some dessert, or at least Knuckles is, some cute little grape-flavored thing. We see some interesting background characters there. One of them kind of looks like Sticks. I'm sure this is another anime reference. I'm not getting. I know they put those in all the time. Anyway, Vector and Knuckles begin to discuss other suspects, and 
Vector suggests Clutch, who Knuckles doesn't know. Once again, going to show how little we've actually seen the Echidna in this series. And not to be too spoilery here, but Clutch will be important for the overall bigger story. But just then we have Charmy interrupting the pair, making a sloppy landing and sending their table flying. Love the little visual of Vector sipping an espresso out of that little cup. Very cute. Espio then appears out of nowhere, scaring the crap out of Vector. Just a bunch of cute interactions all around. Espio says that they've learned where the Babylon rogues will be making their handoff of the goods. And Charmy, looking very proud of himself, says that he heard some sketchy looking guys gossiping and pointed out to Espio. To which the lizard responds saying, yeah, it was all very convenient. But as Knuckles points out, it's the only lead they have, so he has to follow it. Soon we find ourselves in front of some docks with the Babylon rogues, where we see Wave and Jet bickering with one another, while Storm is busy playing with the two relics, naming them Stevie and Nigel, which is precious and is now officially their names forever. Jet snaps at him, telling him not to play with the relics, and when Wave looks at him, asking if he's showing a bit of cultural sensitivity, giving him a chance to show a good side of him for a change, he just says he doesn't want them busted and devalued before he can sell them off. But if they were Babylonian, that'd be a different story. He wouldn't bust up anything from his ancestors' history. The view changes to an alley where we see Knuckles, Espio, Vector, and Charmy all waiting in the dark, preparing to attack the birds. And that is where part one ends. From here, the comic moves over to the kitchen of Vanilla and Cream. And I know that's quite the shift. Normally, I would just cover one story at a time and not mix them up, but I promise they merge in together nicely, so we might as well do them in the order the comic gives us. Anyway, we see the little family, including Cream, Vanilla, Gemeral, and the two Chows, Cheese and Chocola, all preparing for a dinner party. Chocola is making some trouble eating everything he can get his little mitts on. Meanwhile, Vanilla notices that they're all out of butter. She's not able to finish their sauce without said butter, so she is off to the store to grab some more. Gemeral asks if he can go and take care of this mission for them, but Vanilla is not worried about it. She's going to head off to the store herself, should only take a minute, and she tells Cream to keep an eye on the stove and not to forget about the roast. Then, like a Disney princess, she carries on down the road with some birds flying around her. But in the bushes, we see Rough and Tumble. Apparently, they've been waiting for Vanilla to leave her little cottage so they can go and rob it. They've hit some tough times as of recently, and yeah, if we go back to anything we've seen prior to this point in the story, every single time they show up, they get their asses handed to them. So now they've come to this, breaking and entering. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, we see Cream carefully looking over everything on the stove, and I'm honestly quite surprised they left a little girl with so many things on fire, but whatever. She's determined to make sure everything goes perfectly. And as General points out, perfection is an unrealistic goal, but he has observed her performance through many adventures, and she has already proven worthy of this responsibility. Cream appreciates that little boost in confidence and asks the robot to set the dining room table. But as he enters it, he comes across the two skunks. And of course, a fight immediately breaks out. Cream hears a noise in the other room and is just about to check on what's happening, but doesn't want anything to burn, so she sends chocolate out to check instead. The little chow comes across the fight between the robot and the two skunks and rushes back into the kitchen in a panic. But the skunks hear all the commotion and they head over to the kitchen, where they come across Cream with intent to take her hostage. But in the commotion, dishes begin to spill and a fire bursts on the oven top. And that is where part one ends for this story. Let's move on to issue 66 and back to Knuckles in the Chaotix. Our heroes leap out from the alleyway to take on the Babylon rogues a second time. In a panic, Jet tells his team to scatter, split up the loot, and have Storm hold them off. The giant bird and Knuckles continue their fight they left off on Angel Island, while Charmy immediately grabs the relic from Jet. But after Jet says that he won't let that brat steal from him, Charmy immediately returns it because stealing is bad. <laughs> But Espio latches on to the bottom half of Jet's extreme gear, and the two go spinning out into the water. Meanwhile, Wave, who is closer to the water, is followed closely behind by Vector, and it's rare we see him act like an actual crocodile. It's cool seeing him move so quickly through the water and then bite on to her extreme gear. As they go flying off, we turn our attention back to Storm and Knuckles as they continue their fight. And it looks like Storm once again has the upper hand here, saying that in the air or on the ground, it doesn't matter matter, Knuckles can't beat him. So the Echidna responds with a smirk, and how about in the water, and then launches towards the dock below, sending them both into the water, taking out the giant bird. And with that, Knuckles tells the Chaotix to wrap it up, and it just reminds me of the Archie days, and just warms my heart. And we see Wave 
Eve surrenders so Vector doesn't do any more damage to her board, and a waterlogged Jet hands over his relic to Charmy, who politely asks for it this time. And with that, the Babylon rogues are defeated. Once everyone's back on land, Vector asks who hired them to steal the relics. And when Jet refuses to give them answers, Vector threatens to steal their boards. Jet just tells them that the guy never used a name, just called and then paid them, and that's all there is to it. But before they can continue on pressing questions, Knuckles says he's done with it. He got his relics back, and that's all he cares about. Storm threatens another fight, and Knuckles is about to trade fists with him one more time, but the two groups are quite done with all the shenanigans for the day. So, yeah, while they should turn in the rogues to some sort of authorities, Knuckles got what he wanted, so they part ways. And Vector asks Knuckles if he is going to pay them for all their work, and once again, poor Chaotix get a little shafted. As Knuckles doesn't really have anything in the way of money, at least I don't think so. I doubt he has anything in terms of currency up on the island, but he says that a lot of fruits are in season and he can forage in Mushroom Hill, so they can at least be fed. But that reminds Vector that it's dinner time. So he shoves off the two relics, Stevie and Nigel, to Knuckles, and they head off to Vanillas. Knuckles looks on after them, calling them weirdos, but good guys, then asks how he's going to get home. We turn our attention back to the Babylon rogues, where Jet is calling their contact. He had obviously lied to the Chaotix. And I'll give this much to Jet, he does not beat around the bush. He immediately says that they got pinched by the Chaotix, they lost the relics and the fight, so he's not able to do the handoff. But they'll just grab it one more time once the dumb Guardian puts them back in their place, but his contact says it won't be necessary. As it turns out, this was all part of a plan, to ensure that certain parties were preoccupied while he conducted business. And as far as the contact is concerned, his needs have been met. Jet is furious, thinking he's been used, but his contact tells the bird that he will be fairly compensated for his services. And the phone call ends, revealing to us that the contact was Clutch. And it turns out he is in the middle of a meeting with Jewel the Beetle. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Not all of the heroes know who Clutch is. And we end our story with Jewel and Clutch shaking hands, with the opossum saying, as per tonight's agreement, Clean Sweep Incorporated will give give her their undivided attention. Now we have seen him stick his creepy little fingers in other little plots here and there, and we will discuss them next time around. But for now, let's finish up over at Cream and Vanilla's house, where if you'll recall, a fire just went off in the middle of the ensuing chaos. But Cream is determined, covering up the different dishes and turning off the ovens. But she's still all teary-eyed, knowing that she has ruined a couple of dishes. And the skunks aren't done causing chaos as they take the currently prepared dishes and start using them as weapons. A food fight breaks out until a little timer sets off. Yes, even with everything else destroyed, Cream is not about to forget the roast, so she takes it out of the oven, and it turns out it's perfect until a skunk steps on it. <laughs> and that just completely halts all the action. Everyone just pauses in shock, and then Cream breaks down in tears. And you can tell the skunks actually feel a bit bad about this. The fight stop completely, and General does his best to console the sad cream. And just then, Vanilla returns to her house and looks upon the chaos and a dark aura emanates from the mama bunny. Vanilla says, Cream dear, I seem to have missed a few things. And the crying baby bunny points to the two skunks, who look utterly terrified. And Vanilla, barely holding back an unbridled motherly fury, asks the two skunks if it's okay to break into other people's homes to ruin other people's hard work and to attack children. They fall to their knees, begging for forgiveness. And just as Vanilla is about to unleash some sort of fury, the Chaotix arrive as well, looking on in shock and horror at the two skunks, telling Vanilla to stand back as they are trouble, but she says it's quite all right. She thinks they've learned their lesson, and they say no more crime from them today, honest. So the Chaotix relax. They've already had a full day of busting baddies, and then Vanilla turns turns her attention towards her upset daughter, feeling disappointed that she couldn't follow any of the instructions her mom left for her. But Vanilla tells her that she was very brave, and she did her best, and that's always worth being proud of. But with dinner ruined, they have to come up with a second idea for food. So they just order some Chinese. With Vanilla, Cream, the two Chow, Gemeral, the Chaotix, and even the two skunks all around the dinner table. With Vanilla saying, it's not perfect, but sometimes that's better. I love 
love that she's feeding Vector a little pot sticker. Oh, it's precious. So yeah, there you go. Not very high stakes in either story. This was all very, very cute, but it was certainly nice to spend some more time with all of these other characters and without Sonic in sight whatsoever. If I remember correctly, it used to be a rule that Sonic always had to appear on a cover for the Archie series, but he's not on the cover for 65 or 66 and he doesn't appear once. Man, it was cute to see Vector crushing on Vanilla some more and the home life of the rabbits and the robots always really cute. And at least for me, it was just nice to see Knuckles with the Chaotix. They were always a crew to me growing up thanks to the game and thanks to the Archie series where they were treated as Knuckles Freedom Fighters for Angel Island. And yeah, we're still missing Mighty and I hope they change that sooner rather than later. But even for a brief team up, this warmed my heart. This was really nice to see. And I can tell that these guys also miss that combined crew as well. We now have the Tails 2 fully confirming that Knuckles Chaotix is a part of the main game canon. And we even saw a hint at Classic Vector in that Amy special a couple months ago. I'm hoping this is hinting at indications of the return of the Classic Chaotix. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they did make their appearance in Knuckles Anniversary Special showing up in 2024. These little hints are either indicating that is on the cards for the future or they're really trying to push for that from Sonic Team and hopefully they'll be allowed to play with those characters a little more often. We did recently see Mighty again and hey I would love to see the classic Chaotix interpreted in this universe. But for now if this is all we have I'm pretty happy with it. This was a fun little story or set of stories and with Clutch it looks like they're building to something a bit bigger. But we'll touch more on that next time. Before we wrap up for today, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Jumping online and building up your own brand was always an intimidating thing for me, but Squarespace makes that a streamlined, fast, and easy process, all while making you look good thanks to their Fluid Engine, a next-generation website design tool that lets you tweak any of their many, many templates with easy-to-use drag-and-drop tools. And I don't need to tell you how useful websites can be, whether you want to build up a portfolio of your work, an art gallery, gallery, or a shop, because yes, they have everything you need to run your own online business, including analytics that help show you the strongest avenues of growth and help you build up marketing strategies, which include integration with your favorite social media networks. And they can even help you set up an online shop to sell and distribute custom merch. All you have to do is design it and they'll handle production, inventory, and shipping. Really doesn't get any easier than that. And to make it just a bit easier. If you use my link, squarespace.com slash game apologist, you'll get 14 days for free, which is plenty of time to see if this is right for you. And when you want to make a purchase, that same link will get you 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and a huge, huge thank you to the folks who help keep me alive with their support over on Patreon. Some of those folks include Kyle Winter, Cyrus the Skeptic, Joseph Duncan, Sonic 2 Blue, is someone I'm super jealous of because deep down I secretly love blue more than the color group. Still, still gross to say. I can't keep saying. No way. Not portraying green like that. John, Josh Strider, Casey Chaotix, Hatsworth, Tiny Jericho, Ginger Bob, Jack of All Spades, Tristan Trap, Meekers, Dun Dun, Quote, Resident Fanboy, Miles the Prower, Singer J199, Sam Webster, Fish Flop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Jonathan Dobbs, Chad, Super Hyper Mecha SP Mark II, Cecil the Glade, Dark Neon, Stefan Platkonica, Three Monic, Ty Cyan, Graham J. Hall, Lenny X, Wayne is Boss, Lederick, Hold Your Head Up High Even Through the Darkest Night, Jimmy Duke STR, The Lumberjack Trash Baphomet, Autumn from Twitter.com, Enerjack 5, Spades the Nocturne, Ken K of Warheads, Ven 101, Paxton Bisbee, Sindarin 7, Dagcrons, Twilord, Spider Man 2 is still a week away, I'm never updating my name, oh wait, never mind, Paisley, Eric Delgado, Sayonara Robocop, Crimson Rose, Nix the Kobold, Sonic PAJ, Moonicent, Roxas the Cat, Godzilla, Makuta of Salt, his power is like a scam. Alexander Watson, Neil Gampa, Conan Kudo, the Lex, the most powerful ship in the two universes. Native Nerd 27, Kaido Prower, Swift Cannon, Spearman, Omega Man 21, Penn Adelaide, Jamie Torres Jr., The Phantomist, Silver Stars, Daza S, the world's most unironic eight and a half tail stand, one more Sonic robot. SP is currently undergoing an identity crisis, so he created Evil Clone SP, MT Mecha, Yasai, Gob, Charles the Green Dragon, Boten, here to remind everyone that manatees are are awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much, and thank you for joining me for this really tiny little Ann Knuckles November 
marathon. We're going to wrap things up a little later than usual, I apologize, but I'll be back soon to talk a little bit more about Metal Knuckles. Until then, toot toot, Sonic Warriors.